Last year, leftists such as myself were hopeful that we'd one day live in a world where Bernie Sanders was president of the United States and Jeremy Corbyn was prime minister of the United Kingdom. And, you know, this was something that I think everyone viewed as unlikely, but certainly within the realm of possibility. I mean, both of these politicians were taking on the political establishments in their respective countries. So anytime you choose to challenge power and power structures like that in such a direct way, it's going to be difficult. You're going to be disadvantaged. And these institutions are absolutely powerful and they often will do everything in their power to crush you, both directly, indirectly, openly, and covertly. Now, it's no secret that um, Debbie Wasserman Schultz used the power of the DNC to secretly sabotage Bernie Sanders in 2016, and in 2020, Obama used his power and influence within the party to sabotage Bernie Sanders. But one thing that's interesting is that this also occurred in the UK because some labor officials in 2017, when Jeremy Corbyn almost won, acted to lose the election. I'll repeat that. They try to sabotage their own party just to hopefully get Jeremy Corbyn replaced. Now, we know that they lost in 2019. Jeremy Corbyn is no longer the labor leader. But they were acting against their own party's interest, according to a dossier that was just obtained by The Independent, because they didn't like Jeremy Corbyn. So what happened in the United States also happened in the UK. Now, as John Stone of The Independent reports, Labour Party officials opposed to Jeremy Corbyn worked to lose the 2017 general election in the hope that a bad result would trigger a leadership contest to oust him, a dossier drawn up by the party suggests. A huge cache of leaked WhatsApp messages and emails show senior officials from the party's right wing who worked at its HQ became despondent as Labour climbed in the polls during the election campaign despite their efforts. The unreleased report, which The Independent has seen in full, was drawn up in the last days of Mr. Corbyn's leadership and concerns the conduct of certain officials, including some who were investigating cases of anti-Semitism in the party. Labour has confirmed the document is a genuine draft, though it is not clear who it was commissioned or written by. Tactics by anti-Corbyn staff evidence in the report include channeling resources to candidates associated with the right wing of the party, refusing to share information with the leader's office, and coming into the office and doing nothing for a few months during the election campaign. The report says hostile staff created a chat so they could pretend to work while actually speaking to each other, with one participant stating that tap tap tapping away will make us look very busy. An election night chat log showed that 45 minutes after the exit poll revealed that Labour had overturned the conservative majority, one senior official said the result was the opposite to what I had been working towards for the last couple of years, describing themselves and their allies as silent and gray-faced and in need of counseling. Some senior staff joked about hanging and burning Jeremy Corbyn and suggested that another staff member who cheered a speech by the party leader should be shot. Party staff around the unit were also documented regularly describing people, including colleagues they regarded as not sufficiently opposed to the leadership as Trots, short for Trotskyites, or disciples of Russian revolutionary Leon Trotsky. Chat logs show that some colleagues who denounced Trots themselves were in turn themselves privately regarded as Trots by other staffers for being seen as insufficiently critical. So there is a lot of information here, and we barely scratched the surface. So if you want to read the full article, I'll uh, put the link in the description box. But wow. This is um, unsurprising, but still really shocking when you see just how active they were in trying to sabotage Jeremy Corbyn. I think it goes to show you that neoliberals, they hate socialists more than they hate fascists. That's true in the United States. It's true in the UK. They used uh, Russian hysteria, McCarthyism, to criticize people, calling them trots. Um, on top of that, there were some who were saying, you know what, this is just an attempt, this dossier, to absolve Jeremy Corbyn of, you know, claims of anti-Semitism and make it seem as if he wasn't actually anti-Semitic. And there was just this vast conspiracy to overthrow him. But here's the thing. 
this is a confirmed conspiracy. We're no longer talking conspiracy theory. This was confirmed. And, you know, another thing that wasn't talked about is how hostile the media was to Jeremy Corbyn. The same is true for Bernie Sanders. So I think that what this tells us is that here in the United States, as we just, you know, lost and we're grappling with the defeat of Bernie Sanders for a second time in a row, our friends overseas are dealing with the same exact thing. Although you can honestly make the case that Jeremy Corbyn was probably treated worse by the media than Bernie Sanders. That's, it's arguable, but you certainly can make that case. Because the claims of anti-Semitism were so strong that most people who were Jewish in the Labour Party, they viewed Jeremy Corbyn as anti-Semitic. Whereas with Bernie Sanders, you couldn't really lob that claim against him because He's Jewish. He lost family members in the Holocaust. But certainly, they tried to weaponize identity politics in other ways against Bernie Sanders. There were claims of sexism constantly in 2016 and uh, 2020, including by some allies like Elizabeth Warren. You know, there were claims of racism, both tacit and overt. And this is what happens when you challenge the establishment. This is exactly what happens. You know, it's true for the United States. It's true for the United Kingdom. And it's true for other countries as well. Establishment politicians, you know, they have institutional advantages that they oftentimes use to crush the left. It's no different here, and it's no different anywhere else. So when we talk about how Democrats probably would rather prefer to lose with Biden than win with Bernie, I mean, you saw Chris Matthews after Bernie won Nevada speculating whether or not it would be beneficial for Democrats to lose and have four more years of Trump rather than let Bernie win. Um... The same is true in the UK. They preferred the Tories over Jeremy Corbyn and, you know, broadening their social democracy. It is incredibly frustrating. And I think that what this communicates to us is that as leftists everywhere, we really have to broaden our perspective and not just think about you know, the progressive movement and the left-wing socialist anti-capitalist movement as a United States phenomenon. This should be a global movement. Like, how powerful would it be if in countries, in major cities and countries around the world, including the United States, the left took to the streets and demanded social and economic justice, demanded to end interventions and imperialism? I think that once we realize that the fights that we're all fighting in our own countries are connected to fellow lefties abroad, the stronger and better off we'll all be around the globe.